Here is my IMG Scoria, who doesn't look like a Scoria anymore. <laughs> one of the nice, it's actually one of the nicest looking IMGs I think I've ever produced, believe it or not. It's definitely the best IMG Scoria that I've ever seen. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today, we're gonna to be going into the snake room and we're gonna be looking at boas, boa females that are either gonna breed this year or maybe next year. They're boas that I've been growing up for a bunch of years. You know, I've had them since they're babies. A lot of them I produced and I just had to be patient. They've been in the rack for two, three, three and a half years and I've been just feeding them and just being very patient watching them grow. And sometimes it's hard to do that because, you know, you just get frustrated. It's like you want to see progress already. I want to see babies. I want to, I want to breed. And you have to just be patient. I mean, it, it's a snake breeding is a very methodical, meticulous science okay, that requires a lot of patience. If you don't have patience, you'll quit. Because most people want instantaneous gratification and it's not something you're going to get instantaneously. You have to just enjoy your animals, enjoy feeding them, enjoy cleaning them, enjoy watching their natural behavior and learning about them. And then at some point in time, it's gonna be the day and it's gonna be time to breed them. And that's when the excitement comes. So let's go take a look and see what we got. All right, a little update on my male berm I produced a number of years ago. This was my holdback and he's one of my favorites because I kind of hit on every gene that I was looking to hit on. This was a hypo albino, also known as a pearl and green, which is patternless. That's why he has no pattern. And he's also granite. Can't see the granite, but we know he's granite because both parents were granite. It's a recessive trait. So we know that he inherited that. And he's got some decent size on him. You know, we don't overfeed him. You know, there's no reason for him to get big. He's not breeding for us. He's a pet display animal, educational. And I showed you the other day, berms love to blow air. They just love it. I don't know why they do it, but they, it's like a, it's like a rattlesnake shaking his rattle. And you can see he's happy. He's not in a bad mood. He just wants to let me know, this is my cage, I'm in charge here. And once again, a super, super pretty male Burmese pipe on. Here's my little girl, my big girl, I should say. Black Dragon water monitor. Loves hanging out in the water bowl. She just, she really likes it. I, I can't, like I said, I can't wait to have a much bigger enclosure for her with a bigger water feature so she can go in there and, and, and chill out a little bit more. She'll hang out in here all day long. They just like to sit in water. Uh, that's why they call water monitors. Oh, she's, now she's, she's giving me the cold shoulder. <laughs> Super pretty. Like I said, once we get her in the bigger enclosure, I think we're gonna have to be able to take her out a little bit more and interact with her a little bit more. Right now, she's she's still in this this top high hide box, or I should say hide box. She's in this high cage, which stinks because I gotta look up at her. I really need her at like eye level and um, to work with her a little bit. But she's yeah. she's actually got a she's a pretty good temperament. She really is not a aggressive at all. She just likes to come out, but she's big. And, you know, when she comes out, you know, she wants to run all over the place. So once I have a bigger cage for her, where she can actually enjoy, you know, doing other things and have a little bit more room to move around, that she'll have multi-levels. And my friend Chase Anderson, you know, gets to building this cage. I know she's gonna go crazy. She's gonna love it. She's gonna be in all her glory. And hopefully we'll get her to breed because we'll have a nice deep bed of, of bedding so she can dig and bury her eggs and do all the things she's supposed to do as a water monitor. All right, there's my snow, possible moon glow carpet python male. It's funny because, you know, I always had him in a small, like, like a uh, tub and I put him into this nice little display cage here and he hides all the time. This is the first time I've seen him out since I put him in this cage. If you remember, he actually escaped when I first put him in here and I, now I have the cage locked on him. And I think he's like a little like, you know, it's almost like too much room for him. He doesn't really know what to do. He's not used to being in such a big cage and having the ability to move around. And uh, so I think he was a little scared at first, you know, almost like a ball python. Ball pythons hate big cages. 
they like small cages. And that's why people think it's cruel to keep ball pythons in little drawers. I got news for you, they like it. They don't want to be, they don't want to have a lot of room to move around. Carpets, however, usually are different. They usually like to have that ability to climb and, and move. Um, so, I don't know. I think he'll be fine. He'll just, he just has, I think he's still adjusting to life in the, uh, in the big house. So, we'll see. He's going to be going in with a female anyway, for very shortly. Uh, probably another month, and we'll start him breeding. There's my Sanzinia Velotny, Madagascan ground boa. Uh, that's the female, here's the male. I was thinking about moving them into a four foot cage together. I have an open four foot cage in my uh, Australian room. It's a little cooler and they like the cooler temperatures. So, I don't know. Give them a little bit of arboreal setup there. They can kind of climb around a little bit on stuff and branches. I think they would do well in there. I don't know. Um, I think they're big enough now that they're kind of like getting to that bulletproof stage where they're not gonna like be like, you know, they got, they got size in them now. I mean, they can climb. They're going to look pretty cool, I think, in a, in a setup where they can actually move around and stuff like that. I mean, they might not move that much. They might just kind of sit like a bump on a log. But it would be kind of cool to see how they respond to a bigger cage setup. So I'm, I'm thinking about moving them. Amazon Basins. This is our male who still has not turned green yet. I don't know why. He, he's been eating every week, but he's still... He's still orange, and this guy, this female, she's green, but um, it's the funny thing is this this male is actually is actually bigger than this female, but she's green and he's orange, so maybe it's just an age thing. So hopefully soon he'll be turning. You can tell he's already starting to get a little green, so we'll keep an eye on it. All right. Here is my sun dragon. This is Hypo Albino Blood. This is the Colline Albino. I'm growing this female up. We've had her for a couple of years now. She's a 21, so she's about two and a half years old now. And she's not gonna be ready to breed. Not this year, maybe next year. If she keeps eating really well, then you know we might she might do it. She's definitely a good eater, so. Keep an eye on her. Usually on the winter, I give the the females at least a little bit of time off from eating, uh, like they would normally get in the wild, and then we try to feed them really heavily over the summer. And so we cycle feed them essentially. I don't. Not everyone cycle feeds boas. I seem to find that they do well. I don't cycle feed the babies, but I cycle feed the uh, the sub adults and the adults. Here's another big, like, big girl that we're growing up. Hopefully next year she'll go. She's also a 21. We have a lot of 21 grow ups that uh, I've been holding back for two, two and a half years now. This is a VPIT positive IMG, so increasing melanistic gene. The VPIT positive albino takes away that black. So you're never gonna get a fully black snake and you get this like chocolate looking snake. Really, really, very, very cool. A lot of contrast, a lot of shadows, just a lot of interesting lines. Really love her. Um, like I said, one more year, and uh, hopefully we can get her up to enough size that she's going to want to breed for us. And while we'll, we'll watch, looking at 21 holdbacks, here is my IMG Scoria, who doesn't look like a Scoria anymore. <laughs> one of the nice. It's actually one of the nicest looking IMGs I think I've ever produced, believe it or not. It's definitely the best IMG Scoria that I've ever seen. And just so much melanin to positive. I'm, I'm shocked that a Scoria actually would accumulate this much melanin because they really, that's what they do. They, they strip melanin away, they strip pattern away. The snake has a lot of stuff going on with it and it'll make a, some beautiful babies hopefully. You know, and that's uh, the goal, hopefully. She's a little on the smaller side. I don't know if she's gonna go next year. We'll have to see, but we're gonna try for sure. But she might need another year. A little hyposcoria, pet VPIT positive. We saw some VPIT positive visual before with the IMG gene. Now we have a het VPIT positive, which obviously does change pattern, lightens things up a little bit. 
This is combined with the hypogene and the scoria gene during complete dominance. And uh, we get a beautiful female here that we've been growing up for a number of years now. She's another 21, but she's on a little bit on the smaller side. I got her kind of, she's not on the accelerated eating plan, but we'll start feeding her a little bit more heavily. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna probably move her from this rack into this rack here, where she'll have more room, and then we can start feeding her bigger prey items, and I think she'll start growing. Will she be ready next season to breed? I don't know. You know, we still have we still have over a year, so it's possible. Age is, is important, you know. When they get up to about four years old, that's usually pretty good timing to breed them. You know, she's gonna be three and a half next year, so it's gonna be a little sketchy. She might need an extra year. There's a beautiful IMG, sharp albino, hypo. So it's a sun glow, it's also IMG. And you're not gonna see any blacks in this because albino removes the melanin. Um, but you do have, you see how like high definition the reds and the yellows are? That's from the IMG gene. Uh, also you get that really intense dark red eye. That's the IMG gene. This, uh, this female might go this year. This is a 20 and she's three and a half years old. She's got some good, decent size in her. I might put a male with her. I haven't decided what I want to breed her with, but I'm almost thinking maybe my blue line might be cool. Blue line sun glow. We'll have to see. I haven't decided uh, which, which male we're going to put with her, but I think she's going to, she's going to get the uh, bread this year for sure. All right. I showed you her, I think I showed you her last week, but since we're talking about 2020s and 21s that are gonna possibly breed this coming season or next season, this this girl might go this year. This is a 20. She is in a, a labyrinth that is also het for sharp albino. If we do breed her, and I think she's I think she's big enough, we're gonna have to breed her to something that's really cool, that's got sharp in her in it at least. So I prefer something visual, actually sharp. And once again, I'm also thinking about my blue line, Sun Glow, for this uh, girl as well. So haven't really made a final decision yet, but we might be doing that. We might be pulling the trigger. It's either going to be this one or the IMG. I do love, really, really love how this girl looks. And um, there's a very good chance we're going to breed her to the blue line. Great labyrinth pattern. Look at that. All right, here's a hypo Inca. Inca is an incomplete dominant morph, and it's 100% hep blood. This female's a 2020. Remember, the Inca is a, and the bloods are dwarf boas. So this is, a, it seems a little small, the snake, but it's actually ready to breed because these are about the size that these dwarf boas will breed at. And there's no reason to, to, to let her go any longer. I think we're gonna put her, pair her up with something that has blood in it. Haven't decided exactly what we're gonna pair her to yet. We'll be making those decisions over the next month or so, but we have some, so we have some grow ups that are gonna be in the breeding program this year, which is exciting. It took me a couple of years to get these guys to this size, but you know what, patience pays off. All right, last snake of the day, another 2020, this is a Russo red pastel line, hypo sterling. Sterling is the recessive trait that removes all pattern. You see how red this snake is with the red eye? That is from the Russo red pastel line. And obviously the hypo gene enhancing that, taking out any blacks in there. This is one of my nicest Russo red pastel hypo sterlings that I've ever produced. This female really is ready to go this year. I mean age-wise, but I just don't know if she's big enough. Sterling's a big snakes usually. I I don't know. I might have to wait. I really might have to wait another year with her just because she's just not big enough. She's, and she's gorgeous. She is so, so pretty. So we might wait another year on her. That's okay. You got to be patient if you want to have good quality snakes and if you want to have healthy babies. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we got to look at some really cool boas, some of them you've seen before already, but I wanted to show you what I'm thinking about in the back of my head. And I have more, I haven't showed you more of them yet. 
I want to show you what I'm thinking about in terms of what we're going to be putting together here in 2023-24 season and then what might have to wait till next year because it's just not big enough. And there's some beauties. But in the past, I probably would have pumped them up with a lot of food and, and forced them to, or try to get them to breed early. Nowadays, I'm just like, you know what? Uh, the, the snakes are healthier if you take longer. Let them grow at their own pace. And you know what? In the long run, you'll get way more you know, litters of boas out of them if you don't push them too early. Because what happens is a lot of times you can get them to go early, but then what happens is they don't continue to breed. You might They might take two years off. Sometimes they get sick. Sometimes it shortens their life too. So if you're looking long-term and you want to be producing you know, boas from this female that you got in your collection for many years to come, take your time. I know it's hard. Look, I made all the same beginner errors that everyone else did. But, you know, you learn the hard way sometimes. And hopefully this coming season, we're going to have another great season like we had this year with some amazing baby boas. All right, guys, if you're loving these videos, make sure to show us the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.